Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at the SIG P226 with the Romeo 1 red dot sight. The SIG has a, a very good number of different offerings in the P226 lineup, and P226 is probably one of their most popular handguns. I want to talk a little bit about the history of the P226 uh, going back uh, you know, to its inception and where it came from and why. The P226 is a derivative of the P220. The P220, when it was originally uh, came out, it was chambered in three calibers, 9x19, 38 Super, and a 45 Auto. Well, the P226 was developed for a specific purpose. In 1985, we held the uh, XM9 trials, and that called for a high-capacity 9mm pistol. So the P226 was specifically created uh, for the XM9 program. Now, as the program would end up going, the Barda 92F would win uh, that competition. However, the SIG did not go away. The Navy uh, SEALs, particularly the SEALs, uh, were quite fond of the P226. They had some issues with the M9, uh, with the slides, fra the slides fracturing. That was not, you know, with the brightest control. Uh, that was ammunition related issue. That same ammunition cr cracked the frames of the uh, SIG pistols. But they decided they did not want to use the M9. They wanted to go with the SIG 226. So SOCOM has used the, two, the P226 for quite some time. In fact, the version that you're seeing right here is the Mark 25 uh, pistol. Uh, this particular one is, was SOCOM specific. This is the later version. Uh, this has the, the stainless steel slide versus the, uh, you know, the, the, the stamped sheet model, which we're talking a little bit about uh, some of the different variations of that. The 226 went into production uh, in 1983 uh, and still produced today. The XM9 pistols were imported from SACO Defense uh, for the XM9 trials. All the commercial SIG pistols would come in from inner arms. However, uh, that would end once SIG USA or SIG Arms was uh, opened up in the U.S. And then uh, SIG Arms became the, became the importer of all SIG pistols coming in from Germany. So going back to probably, uh, I would say, 1992, 93, that, and that era in there is when uh, SIG USA or SIG Arms started producing slides. Around the 1993-94 time period, uh, SIG USA or SIG Arms started production of stainless steel one-piece slides. All P-Series pistols prior to that, the slides were manufactured out of a heavy-grade uh, steel metal stamping with a welded nose containing an integral uh, barrel bushing. There was a separate breech block that was, that was pinned in place by two roll pins. Once SIG Arms started manufacturing the one-piece uh, stainless steel slides, pretty much everything from that, that, that time forward was all manufactured from the stainless steel rather than the use of the uh, heavy-gauge steel metal stampings. So that was a major uh, reliability enhancement. Uh, you did no longer have those issues with the pins that held the breech block in, into place uh, breaking. Uh, and it was a much more resilient and it was uh, much more uh, corrosive resistant as well. We're going to start talking about the P226E2 or E square, which introduced in 2010. What that refers to is the grip. As you can see here, when you look at the two of them, you'll see there's a swell on this top one here. That's what we're referred to as the E squared. What that does is it decreases your, your reach for your trigger by, by about a half inch. Uh, you also have a shorter reset on that trigger as well. So basically people with smaller hands would be able to get their hands around that too, um, to be able to pull the trigger uh, comfortably. Uh, and as of now, all, all production P series uh, all utilize this E squared technology. As you can see from the uh, Mark 25, this was uh, prior to, this was prior to uh, the adoption of the E squared. And pretty much all the ones that went to SOCOM uh, did not have the E squared on it at all. So looking at the, Specifications of this pistol: We have a we have a nine millimeter caliber pistol. Uh, grip is the E squared. The frame is aluminum with a nitron finish. The slide one piece stainless steel with a nitron finish. Uh, the rail is a 1913 rail on the bottom. The trigger is double action, single action. Your first pull is long draw and double action. Then after that, you have your shorter single action trigger pull. All your controls are on the left hand side. You have the decock, and you have your slide release. You also have a disassembling latch release lever. And your hammer. Barrel length is 4.4 inches. It's also uh, a nitron coated. Overall length is 7.7 .7 inches, height 6.4 inches, with a weight of 34.4 ounces. Now, the sights on this particular model, the 226 with Romeo 1, are the suppressor height sights. You can see how, how much higher they sit up rather than that of the, the P226. What that enables you to do is when you have your your uh, your your sight on here, it enables you to be able to co-witness. So if your dot was to go out, you'd still be able to use your your iron sights. And this pistol can also be had with a sound suppressor as well. So you have the uh, threaded barrel on here, and you could attach either a SIG suppressor or any other kind of suppressor on there as well. Magazine capacity is 15 plus one. Uh, it's been standard for this pistol throughout its uh, throughout its time. Polymer grips. 
Now we're talking about the, the Romeo 1. This has gotten quite popular over the last several years for as far as using the red dot sights. Um, now there's some benefits to the red dot sights. You only have one aiming point rather than two, so it's much, much quicker. Uh, you're also able to use both eyes open very much easier. The Romeo 1 is, is molded from a glass spherical lens, a high performance coating on it. There's a manual illumination control, as we see right here, with the two arrows up and down, which gives you uh, multiple types of, uh, of brightness intensities. You have a three MOA red dot. Uh, it's, it's powered by a CR1632 battery. The housing is made from an aircraft grade magnesium, and it's waterproof and fireproof as well. Now, like any sick pistol, disassembles as normal. Drop your magazine. We're going to make sure that it's empty. We're going to lock the slide back to the rear. We're going to push downward on the disassembling latch release lever. Pull back, forward. The slide comes right off. You have a braided recoil spring. And then you have your barrel. And again, you can purchase the threaded barrel for this very, very easily, and it just drops right in place. Now, as far as safety is concerned, you have a four-point safety on here. Uh, first, you have the uh, firing pin safety. You also have the trigger. Now, the safeties you have on the model P226 is basically what you have with any modern combat pistol. You do have, as you can see, the firing pin block right here. So it's a spring-loaded plunger. What that does is it locks the firing pin in, a, in the rearward position until the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear. When the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear, an arm lifts up, pushes upward, and allows the firing pin to protrude to at the cartridge case. You also have the decocker. And also the way the, the way the hammer is set up, the hammer does not rest on the firing pin. So you have that as well. The reassembly, very, very simple. Now, the braided recoil springs, I'll talk a little bit about those as well. Um, they don't exist on here just because SIGs are high quality. There's a reason for it. You have a very short recoil spring compartment within the pistol itself. So what that means is you can only have so long of a recoil spring and you only have so much uh, space for it to, for it to compress and, and, and to stack. So if you were to use a single strand uh, recoil spring, it would take its sets relatively quickly and you would be going through recoil springs very, very, very fast. Um, by having the braids on here, it enables you to still have it compact, but enables it to last significantly uh, longer. SIG does recommend you replace these every five to 7,000 rounds, uh, which I certainly would concur. Now this pistol is pretty much set up for a competition pistol uh, by having you know, your, your sights, by having uh, the co-witness sights as well as the, the RMO type sight. Now this could also be used as a carrier or a combat pistol as well. The only setback to having this as a combat pistol is, is with the use of anything that's battery operated. Because anything that's battery operated can go at, at any time. Uh, you have to change your batteries out on a regular basis. You also have to worry about how the batteries are going to react to the cold weather. So for really for a combat type gun or for a carry type gun, I don't really know how good anything that uses a battery is a, is a good thing, especially if you don't have rear sights that are uh, co-witness. So if it battery, if the red dot's out, you can still use your iron sights. Now I was very interested in this one. That's why I requested this one as a review from SIG because you know I've been messing around with some of these RMO type sights. I have uh, one of the Vortex and I also have one of the Trigicons. So this is the first time I was using this SIG. And I was anxious to see how this pistol would shoot. Now, the ammunition that we had was the uh, SIG Match Elite and the SIG 124 grain full metal jacket. Now, the nice thing about this pistol, this pistol is also a complete SIG weapon system. You have the SIG pistol, you have the SIG sight, and you also have the SIG ammunition. Now, looking at the 124 grain full metal jacket, we had a uh, muzzle velocity of uh, 1,071 feet per second. That is not the NATO Plus P. Uh, that is a standard uh, commercial SAMI spec 124 grain full metal jacket. And then the SIG Elite, this is subsonic, this is a 147 grain uh, V-Crown jacket at hollow point at 910 feet per second. And I have to say the SIG V-Match Elite, the Match Elite, was an extremely accurate cartridge. At, at uh, 15 yards, I had a 1.34 inch group uh, with it. Now, we talk about pistols that, that really try to get away from talking a lot about group size because it's sort of irrelevant. Uh, these are combat pistols. They're not designed to be match grade pistols, putting one bolt through the same hole. They're designed to put holes in bad guys and have them bleed out. Uh, that's the purpose of what a, a combat pistol is for, and it doesn't require having uh, both bullets going through the same hole. But as a writer and as anybody in the media, one of the things you always talk about is how accurate the pistol is. Uh, so to give you that, yeah, I got 1.34 inches, and that was with the match lead ammunition. Now, as this pistol was uh, taken out of the uh, the box, uh, oddly enough, it was already zeroed. So I'm not sure whether this went to any writers before me or not, but it came with a uh, adjustment tool. 
And it also came with a cover for the uh, Red Dot sight. Two magazines, two 15-shot magazines. Uh, the trigger is very typical, what you expect of a SIG. Now, the double action are what's always really rough on these ones. Um, you have very heavy, uh, long, drawn double action pull. And what people don't like about the double singles is on your first one, you tend to pull high because of the fact that you're uh, had that heavy pull. And then when you go to your single your single action, you end up pulling low because you're anticipating that heavy pull, which is why a lot of people do prefer Glock-type pistols with a striker fire because your first trigger pull is the same as your last trigger pull. So that just depends on what you like. Um, but the fit and finish, this pistol was just what you would expect from a SIG. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take it to the range. We're going to see how it shoots. Uh, overall, we put quite a few, few rounds through this pistol. We had over 500 rounds of the SIG 124 rainfall metal jacket, 100 rounds of the SIG uh, Match Elite, as well as another 200 rounds of the uh, Remington 115 rainfall metal jacket. Not a single malfunction as you would expect. Accurate trigger was, like I said, the single action trigger is nice on this. Uh, double action was a bit heavy. Uh, it's what you would come to expect from uh, a SIG P226 pistol. I don't expect the SIG P226 to go anywhere uh, in the future. Uh, it's still one of SIG's staples. Uh, it's still their probably most popular military pistol uh, in their lineup, uh, utilized by militaries all over the world, law enforcement. You know, SIG, uh, SIG was always its own worst enemy for as far as cost. Uh, you go back to with the introduction of the uh, M9 pistol, the XM9, and you also had the same time you had law enforcement switching over to uh, 9mm uh, caliber pistols to get rid of their um, rid of revolvers. And SIG sort of hurt themselves because they were so damn expensive. They were that much more expensive than Beretta and Smith & Wesson. So they sort of were cost prohibitive to a lot of police departments. Uh, so they probably did not get as much use as they could have uh, just because of the cost uh, that they had. You know, generally it was your police departments who were more well-to-do uh, areas or you also had um, areas where they were able to use, seize money uh, and buy equipment. Uh, that was the case of a couple of departments back home in, in Rochester. They were able to use money that they seized to, to buy police equipment and so forth, and that helped them get some of the different handguns or some of the different types of weapons that they wanted that uh, they normally couldn't afford. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, even better, share. Thank you.